first known case of Zika virus transmission in the U.S. has been reported. While the U.S. House Oversight Committee will hold a hearing on Flint and water co contamination today, and Lady Gaga will sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl 50 this Sunday. Today is Wednesday, February 3rd, 2016. I'm Sam Barway, and this is Laker News. Health officials on Tuesday reported that a person in Texas has become infected with the Zika virus through sex in the first case of illness being transmitted within the U.S. amid the current outbreak in Latin America. The unidentified person had not traveled but had sex with a person who had returned from Venezuela and fallen ill with Zika, Dallas County health officials said. The virus linked to the birth defects in thousands of babies in Brazil is spreading rapidly in the Americas. Zika had not been thought to spread by by the bite of mosquitoes, so sexual contact as a mode of transmission would be potentially alarming development. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control confirmed it was the first U.S. Zika case in someone who had not traveled abroad in the current outbreak. The World Health Organization voiced concern over the report and called for further investigation. North Korea is raising international alerts with their plans to launch what they call an Earth monitoring satellite into space later this month. CNN's Barbara Starr has a story. Japan's military on high alert in Tokyo, watching for a North Korean satellite launch, deploying Patriot missiles around the headquarters of Japan's Ministry of Defense. North Korea has now openly declared it will launch a satellite on top of a rocket sometime between February 8th and 25th. This act would violate numerous Security Council resolutions by utilizing proscribed ballistic missile technology. It also comes on the heels, as you know, of the January 6th nuclear test, which is itself an egregious violation of UN Security Council resolutions. The major U.S. worry, it's all a cover for a bigger effort. The North Koreans call it a satellite launch, but, but let's not kid around. This is an, an attempt to build an intercontinental ballistic missile that is capable of carrying a nuclear warhead to the United States or other destinations. In 2012, North Korea successfully conducted a similar satellite launch. U.S. intelligence agencies watching this time will look closely for signs of an improved rocket booster, the equivalent of a long-range missile. And Defense Secretary and Ash Carter warning the rogue nation's military is under constant U.S. scrutiny. We, as I said, never take our eye off that. Every single day we're watching that DMZ. The latest commercial satellite imagery also showing increased nuclear fuel activity at North Korea's major nuclear facility at Yongbyon. Amid growing U.S. worry, North Korea is hiding even more. They also have a program based on highly enriched uranium at a dispersed set of facilities, which we cannot track and monitor. So they have two parallel programs to develop nuclear weapons, and they have a missile system uh, as a delivery vehicle. The North Korean satellite launch site is designed so everything is hidden from view. That may make it very difficult for U.S. spy satellites to determine what is happening until the last minutes before a launch. Barbara Starr, CNN, the Pentagon. Today, U.S. House Oversight Committee will hold the first congressional hearing into the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Flint's drinking water became contaminated with lead in April 2014 after the city switched its source from Lake Huron to the course of Flint water as, as a cost-saving measure. State officials downplay the reports of lead in water and a spike in lead levels in the blood of Flint children. The manager at the time, Dar Darnell Early, reported won't be testifying. Neither will Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, who is facing questions about when he first knew there was too much lead in Flint, Michigan's drinking water. With the caucuses in Iowa behind them, the pack of presidential candidates is racing to garner votes in the first in national New Hampshire primary next week. Among the first big events for the remaining two Democratic candidates, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, is a town hall style meeting today hosted by CNN in Derry at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Sanders and Clinton will field questions for, from potential voters as well as CNN anchor Anderson Cooper. Given the close results in Iowa, fireworks seem, can, seem certain as Clinton attempts to catch Sanders, who leads in New Hampshire polls. 
In, the first visit, in his first visit to, the, to an American mosque as chief executive, President Obama will visit a Baltimore area Islamic center today amid growing concerns about hostility towards Muslim Americans. Obama will speak at Islamic Society of Baltimore in Cansville, Maryland, and a large community center in the city's western suburbs that serves thousands of people with a place of worship, housing complex, and schools. Obama will meet with community members and discuss religious freedom, the White House said. CVS Pharmacy and Target are officially, are officially tying the knot today with the grand opening of their first joint locations in Charlotte. Following CVS's purchase of Target's pharmacy business last June, Target's in-house pharmacies and clinics will be rebranded as CVS Pharmacy and CVS Mini Clinics in the coming months. The pharmacies and clinics will remain open during the revamp while patients' records are transferred from Target to CVS, according to the company officials. Six-time Grammy award-winning record artist Lady Gaga is set to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl on Sunday. NFL announcing on Tuesday that Gaga will sing Star Spangled Banger at Levy Stadium in San Charlotte, California, where the Carolina Panthers will take on the Denver Broncos. Academy Award-winning actress Marley Matlin will perform the American Sign Language during the national anthem. Super Bowl 50 will air on CBS, and halftime show performers include Coldplay and Beyonce. Well, that's all we have for you here today at Laker News. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Sean Barway, and we'll see you tomorrow.